Friends of Model Trains, welcome to another video in our Digital for Beginners series. In the last video, we unlocked our Z21 for wireless control using the maintenance tool. But the maintenance tool can do so much more. In this video, I will show you what the individual tabs mean and what you can do with the program. As soon as you connect to a control center, the tabs are always created individually depending on the connected control center. You see the tabs have changed because the Z21 start is now connected. In the status window, you can see the Z21 serial number, which was already used for activation in the last video. And under firmware version, you can see the currently installed firmware, which is relevant for drive mode. The current power consumption on the main track is always displayed here. Let's go through the individual tabs one by one. In the second tab under Settings, you can pretty much make all the important settings for the Z21. One of the most important settings is the Activate Railcom or Do Not Activate Railcom item. What is Railcom? Railcom is the feedback from the locomotive decoder to the control center. If you have older vehicles with older decoders that do not support Railcom, you should always set the check mark for Deactivate Railcom. There may otherwise be communication problems between the control center and the decoder. If you have made a change, the Activate Railcom check is removed. Then please click on Right. The control center has now applied the setting. The track signal type can then be set DCC format and Motorola MM, DCC only, Motorola only. In most cases, keeping the factory settings is enough. The short circuit sensitivity can be set. This is especially important if you use a reversing loop module. We will get to this in one of the later videos. You can also change settings when you press the stop button on the control center. What should happen? The train should now be stopped, or the track voltage should be switched off completely so that everything is disabled. When getting started, Railcom is one of the most important functions that you should activate, deactivate, depending on the vehicles you are using. The other functions are less relevant when getting started. In the next tab, IP settings, you will see caution with a warning message. If you want to use your own router, you can do so. However, you should only do this if you know how. Because if you change the IP settings in the control center, the router may stop communicating with the control center, just so you know. You will be asked twice if you are sure for good measure. If you want to change the settings, Confirm twice with accept, but only if you are sure that you really know what you are doing. However, if you are using the pre-configured router, as in our case, you don't need to change anything. So click on no here and leave the network settings as they are pre-configured at the factory. The next tab is the R bus. The R bus feedback bus is needed, for example, for busy messages or PC control but we will get to that in another video. The next tab, Multi-Mouse, is a little more interesting. The Multi-Mouse also has firmware, so an operating system that is installed. This has been updated several times. With the last update for the Multi-Mouse, version 1.05, the Multi-Mouse was expanded from 20 functions to 28 functions. That's why this is a very important update and why we are now going to install it on the Multi-Mouse. Normally, the Multi-Mouse is connected to the X-Bus at the front, but for the update, it has to be connected to the R-Bus. To do so, remove it from the X-Bus. Turn the control center and connect the Multi-Mouse to the R-Bus. For the update, the Multi-Mouse must be connected to the rear of the R-Bus. To do so, plug the Multi-Mouse cable into the R-Bus. To install the current firmware on the Multi-Mouse, simply click on Update. 
this takes a moment. Now it says boot and the progress bar shows the firmware being installed on the multi-mouse. So, the multi-mouse restarts and we have installed the current firmware. Now, we also get the multi-mouse update successful message. The next tab is for the firmware update of the control center. Go back to the first point, status. Here, you can see that version 1.32 is currently installed, but 1.41 is the currently available firmware. That means the control center can be updated. To install the current firmware on the Z21, simply click on Update again. You will see the progress bar again. This goes pretty quickly, for 20 to 30 seconds, and then the control center is up to date. As you have heard and seen, the firmware update has been successfully completed. Confirm with OK. If you now switch back to the status window, you can see that 1.41 is the current firmware installed on the Z21 start. And the last tab in the maintenance tool, CV Programming. Here you can program the locomotive address or change drive data in the vehicle, similar to with the multi-mouse. We will talk about programming with the maintenance tool as well as with the multi-mouse in a later video. Under Options, you can update the Wireless LAN mouse. We will also get to this later, however, when the Wireless LAN mouse has been registered with the Z21. And that brings us to the end of the video. You have seen how to use the maintenance tool to install the latest firmware on the multi-mouse or the Z21. All updates are free of charge, so the latest firmware versions for your Z21 digital devices are always available. Thank you for watching and I look forward to the next video.